What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Rusty and we are back at our shop. This video is going to be a little bit different. We are doing our oil change. First ever oil change in about two and a half, three years on this Volvo that was completely rebuilt uh, inside outside. I mean the, the roof was caved in. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead, watch my videos. It's very interesting on this truck. This thing is completed. We are putting it on the road. We are going to be owner operator with this thing. I've already decided I will be doing a couple more videos about it doing random stuff here and there but we are putting it on the road maintenance oil change let's go this thing was completely detailed by my buddy i got the new mattress right there ready to go i have to still install my cb radio all that stuff and my little ac unit i have no clue where i'm gonna put that thing yet i will figure it out let's go ahead and start this boy girl whatever she is some reason she takes a while to start but it's like a volvo thing they said this oil is pretty old the fuel is pretty old but if you guys uh have my instagram you'll see that i just filled this thing up 130 dollars where's the fuel is that the fuel yeah so we got like a little over a quarter of a tank right there so it had, does have some fresh fuel we do uh you know have to run the fresh fuel through because it's old three-year-old fuel will i guess do that let's um pull it in into the shop put it on those little sketchy wooden dolly things lift this thing up a little bit and i'll show you guys exactly how to do the oil change on these volvos We got a semi truck on our little homemade two by four jack stand type of deal. Yeah, a little sus, but we like it. We like it. You know what I'm saying? Also, the filters. We got two filters right here, and then that one is also an oil filter, but it is an oil filter bypass. So, underneath, I will show you a little later. It's a lot easier to see. We have our new filters right here. We have the bypass filter right there. Wait, which one is it? Right there. This has bypass filter. And then we are using the original Volvo oil. So we are going with the Volvo 1540, uh, 15W40. And I think this is not synthetic, but we do have 21,000 miles on our Volvo. We don't really need synthetic right now. Uh, that's why I like using the original stuff. Also, our drain valve is leaking because, you know, it has been sitting for about three years. We did purchase this um, engine oil drain valve. We will be upgrading our stuff right there. As you can see, she a little wet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she's wet because she hit right there. That was just, that was probably my bad. I remember actually. But yeah, there's a, there's a little gasket inside there that is leaking. And uh, yeah, that just happens over time. So that's why we're gonna be throwing that away. We're probably gonna keep it just in case this thing fails. I don't really trust this as much, but it does say it is made in Japan. So kind of trust it a little bit. And then we have our filters right there. Pretty simple guys, very self-explanatory. We're gonna pretty much put oh, two of these five gallon buckets they're all gonna fill up pretty high so not really tripping about that we're gonna first start with the oil filters they're gonna be on is this still hot yeah it is they're gonna be on pretty tight because they've been sitting for a while but i got a tool for that first step is to unscrew the oil cap right here just so we have a little bit of free flowing action you know what i'm saying and if you are wondering since this is a volvo i am wearing my flip-flops it's just a must and man i just literally broke this flip-flop let me super glue this thing real quick and let's start draining these filters all right boys i got a zip tie relax we're good now i'm gonna just throw these away when i get home so to unscrew these filters you can use a lot of different things it's up to you so start with this this is, does not fit our filters as you can tell it's a little too small but you can buy a bigger one. This is pretty useful, it's pretty easy. But at home, you're probably not gonna have that since I'm not gonna use that either. You could use something like this. This is really helpful. And if it's not, then you can go to something like that. 
let's see what the best outcome for us is man they are on there tight but yeah the other one didn't fit so we only went with these things but yeah let's get these unscrewed real quick and let them leak out Okay, next one. Woo! It's hot. Last one. Please don't splash me in my face. I don't know if I would like it or hate it. I really don't want to find out though. Ah, what the heck? It's like, oh. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, remember to always check your part number. And this is the oil filter. And one of the end ones is the oil bypass right there. So you, you really can't mess this up. A lot of people say you very be careful because you can mess this up. Uh, do not put them backwards, which is a lie. Don't believe everything here on the internet. It's impossible to put them backwards. So we have the oil filter and we have the oil filter bypass right there. and obviously you can tell this bypass one is bigger the hole is bigger the regular filter the hole is smaller you can't mess that up trust me you would not put this on there you cannot put this on there so don't believe what you hear on the internet so yeah we're gonna install these and a lot of people like to look at these part numbers right here obviously this part number does not match this part number that's because uh, I cross-referenced them and they changed the number so this is the number now instead of a uh, three three right there so yeah cross reference your numbers ask the dealer whatever you want to ask them but yeah this is the right filters the right bypass uh, oil filter right there let's go ahead we're going to lubricate the seals right here fill these bad boys up all the way to the top or almost all the way to the top uh, you have to do this because if you don't do this your engine can run dry with no lubrication for five to ten seconds which can pretty much destroy your engine in the long run. So I would not recommend doing that. Make sure you top these off at least halfway or more than halfway, lubricate your little seals. Also, I was wrong about one thing. This is obviously my first time doing this oil change. You actually do need this clamp to tighten the filters back up. It's funny because master mechanics tell me to do this, but on the filter, it's hilarious. It says, do not, you see that? It says, do not use that tool. It says, do not throw away in a trash can, which I'm gonna probably delete all of those. But yeah, it says, lubricate the top seal, tighten the top seal with your hands. And then it says, right when it's tight, you turn it with two of your hands, you turn it another degree and three fourths. Yeah, not gonna do that, boys. I'm sorry, but these things are on tight and they come off tight. So what am I gonna do? I'm obviously not gonna follow directions. Like it says on here, do not use this tool. And I'm actually gonna use this tool just to tighten it a little more. I'll do it as much as I can by hand, but the rest is gonna be with this Mahigi. Just letting you know, it took about one and a half gallons to fill all these filters up. Mmm, lube. Make sure you clean off those little rails, make sure everything's all shiny, and screw these back on. Easy peasy. All right, all tight. I'm gonna go ahead and use that tool. Do another probably quarter of an inch. Uh, actually, probably like 15 o'clock right here tighten more with that tool and we should be all gucci eh. last thing i like doing it's necessary because of all this stuff everywhere brake cleaner and just go ham on it you know what i'm saying pretty much takes the whole bottle all right, next thing is the drain plug. We have a one and one fourth, I guess that's how you say it, plug. Is that the right size? Yeah, I wasn't even sure, but you go ahead and unscrew this. Oh, damn. 
Yeah, I'm warning you right now, this is gonna go really fast. If you guys do wanna keep this drain plug, I would just try to wiggle it until you feel it's at the end of its threads, and then quickly pull it out. In my case, I don't really care about it. I do kinda want it to fall in here, but at the same time, I do wanna keep it. So I'm gonna try to not let it fall in there. And uh, this is five gallons. This probably holds like 10, 11. Make sure you have the other five gallon bucket ready because it's gonna go fast. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. Ooh. Blacker than Jerome's. What a messy job. This one's all the way full. Black gold right there. This one's maybe a quarter or half already. We're gonna let it drain all the way. When I do my oil changes, I like to, you know, get my finger in here, taste it a little bit. <clears throat> so we have a, a little bit of copper in there probably because of the bearings. Man, this motor's probably toast, actually. Man, why does it taste like that? It's so weird. Also, while it's draining on the original drain plug, there is a magnet, I'm pretty sure, on here. And uh, yeah, I got no metal flakes, no nothing. There is some dirt in here or something. Doesn't seem like it's, I don't know if you guys can tell. Doesn't seem like it's metal, just like some debris. But yeah, this engine I think is Gucci. We're obviously not reusing this one or installing this thing and uh, you literally get a wrench put it i'm gonna show you how i do it but yeah put it on make sure this valve right here isn't facing towards us when you're driving it's towards the other way ah i'll explain it in a second a lot of people are gonna argue about these ramps that it actually lifts the front of the truck a little bit and it's not level on the ground and that means you cannot get all the oil out of your pan that section between the plug and then the back side right there you're not going to get everything out and to you guys i say you're absolutely correct but you know what it doesn't even matter because i don't think you guys understand when dealerships and even regular cars when they do oil changes literally when it stops coming out and it starts just regularly dripping as soon as that happens they put the plug back in and they screw it in they do that to save money they literally leave about a quart and in the semi truck probably about a gallon with old oil still in it. All right, let's install this valve. So pretty much as you can tell, it goes straight in there. You screw it in and there's the valve. Right now you can see that it's open and then you turn this little mahigi thing and it closes it with this little ball bearing thing. Uh, this one's one of the best ones, the made in Japan one. There's also another one from Napa called Easy uh, Valve, which I'm not gonna lie, it's from China. I don't think I would trust it as much as this, but I don't know. Let's give this a go. And it's gold, so it looks cool. Let's put it in. It's dripping out oil still, but like it matters. Hopefully it's the same tread. I thought about the same tread and it is the same tread, perfect. Oh. all right all right tightened it with my crescent wrench and this is how you close it right here let's see i don't know man i don't know if i trust this but i know a lot of people they use this and they said it is so nice somebody could definitely just like oh there is a little stopper thing so this doesn't come loose and ejaculate itself for no reason on the highway that would suck. Looks good, looks good. Let's fill up the soil. I don't know, I like, I like my brake fluid. I like to keep everything clean over here. Just so if it leaks later, I know that it's leaking instead of my mess here. If you guys don't have brake fluid, just use the greaser and water. Should be all Gucci. All right, boys, we got 10 gallons in. We have two left over. We're probably not gonna need one of them, but I just checked. It is exactly full, but we're not gonna know exactly until we start this up, warm it up again, check for leaks, drive it off these ramps, and then check again. Always make sure you have oil pressure right at an oil change. 
because it's gonna fluctuate a little bit and then it's gonna go back to where it normally is. Let's get off these ramps. Take the stick out, clean her off, do one last check. I don't know, it might be actually only 10 gallons. Might not be 11, I think about two extra gallons. Oh snap, it looks like I have. Why? There's only 10 gallons in this thing? What? Just checked again. Yep, total, I put in into the filters, into the engine, total 10 gallons. And it was perfect. I have two gallons left over, it's okay. I bought a little extra and price reveal guys, this oil, yeah, I know, I know, I know. This is gonna be a dirty job, by the way. If you guys are planning on doing this at home, this is just the way it is. We filled up five gallon, and then not even half. Was I low on oil? Was that 10? Damn, maybe, I don't know. And then maybe a gallon on the floor. But yeah, make sure you go under here, make sure your filters are not leaking from here, from here, wherever way you wanna look. And my little valve thing over there isn't leaking, so. We are good to go, boys. We spent 300 bucks on the filters and the oil. So the dealer wanted about $620 for this oil change. If you guys wanna go in depth a little more, if you wanna you know, do a whole PM on a truck, you can. But if you guys do uh, watch my videos, I have changed this water separator filter already for obviously a Detroit one, you know, Volvo Detroit, same, same, but different. And yeah, change this one already for a brand new one. And if you wanna go even more, there's a, I think this one's a coolant filter right here, or yeah, I think this one's the coolant filter. You don't really have to change that one until the Volvo gets up to that 400, 500 mile mark and something happens to the radiator or something, go ahead and change it. And then there is a secondary fuel filter, which, how can I show this to you guys? Oh, right there right there that white thing right here that's the other fuel filter this is the main fuel filter and then on the other side where it's clear that's a fuel filter slash water separator filter right here there's a what valve here just in case you got water into the fuel you just you can see the difference and you just let go of some of the water so yeah not going to change any of those all of those seem pretty well plus i paid like 30 40 bucks more for that valve thing and you know another 40 bucks for these two extra oils so if you guys want it's actually going to be total about 220 bucks for 10 gallons and filters from the dealer i will recommend to get you know volvo oil but you can use whatever you want whatever you think is better for you it doesn't really matter just don't put water okay put some some sort of oil don't put water so yeah if you want to save 50 percent on your, even more actually on your oil change go ahead and do your own thing if you really want to if you want to get gained experience install that valve and there is some shortcuts to unscrewing those filters by using that you don't have to use these ramps if you don't want to you take a piece of this front bumper off but it's really hard to explain right now i really didn't do that process maybe next time i will it is a super quick oil change if you know how to do that part but we're not at the stage right now so that's the end of this video, guys. Hopefully you like it. We're gonna go ahead and start her up again, warm her up, take her for a nice little cruise, check everything out, make sure nothing leaks again. Enjoy that video and yeah, appreciate it, guys. Be blessed, like always, awesome stuff coming up. So stick tuned, deuces.